How's it going guys? My name is Dom and today I'll be showing you how to build your own reusable banner component using React, TypeScript and Tailwind CSS. So let's jump right into it. So right here we have four banner variants, info, success, warning and error. And we can see here that you can pass pretty much whatever you want inside the banner content, including links. Now the banners are going to be made up of three parts, the icon, the content and the close button. And it's also worth mentioning that we're going to be doing this in such a way that the parent component controls the state of the visibility, uh, basically whether or not we display the banner. So when I click the close button here, it's gonna push up to the parent and the state is gonna be managed there. This is gonna allow you to uh, have this banner more widely compatible across your application. And it also comes in handy if you have complex logic, which dictates whether or not the banner displays, okay? So going inside this tab right here, let's begin from scratch to create what I just showed you. So going inside VS Code, I've got this Vt set up with the React TypeScript template. The only package to install today is going to be React Icons. So we'll say here npm install uh, React Icons. And we're going to be using the Ion Icons set from here as usual on this channel. Uh, but you can uh, probably choose whatever icon library that you wish to. Okay, so first step here is gonna to be to create a new folder for the banner component. Let's call this simply just banner and make a new file inside there called banner.tsx. And I want to firstly define the props and the component itself, get that working before jumping back into the app file to actually test it out. So inside our banner.tsx component, we're going to firstly define a type which specifies all of the different variants that we're going to support. We'll say type banner variant equal to, and we're gonna accept here info as well as success and warning, then lastly, the error variant, okay? Now, we're going to define the banner props, whatever gets passed into the component. And with this one here, we're going to firstly, of course, accept the variant itself. It's gonna be optional with a type of banner variant. We're gonna default this in the component to be the info version or info variant, okay? Then we're gonna say visible. It's gonna be a Boolean, also optional, whether or not the banner is currently visible. It is gonna be defaulted to be true in the component. Then down here, we're gonna say on close. It's gonna be a simple function that accepts no parameters and returns nothing. It's a simple uh, you know, callback for uh, when the user clicks on the uh, close button, okay? Also optional. So. Down here, let's define the function itself. We'll say const banner. We're gonna be giving this uh, a function component right here, as well as props with children. So we accept the children prop uh, for you to pass your content in. And as well as of course the banner props type right there. We're going to simply uh, hop down here and we're going to return and just say banner just for now, just to see if this actually works. Then lastly, we're going to export default banner, just like this, okay? We'll save this, go inside the app.tsx. I now want to render out the banner to the screen. So for this, just to make it a little bit nicer to read here, I'm gonna be using a div with some tailwind classes just to give this a flex, then flex column a gap of four and a margin of four, just so again, there's this space between each banner that you might uh, that you may render, as well as uh, some margin across the page there. And we're gonna say banner just like this. We can import that and we should now see the uh, some, some text, yeah, you know, of course in the browser. So let's say npm run dev, go back inside the browser here, refresh, and we get this right here. So, we have completed, of course, the props and the whole uh, template for the banner itself. 
Let's now, of course, implement some of the logic. So we're going to begin by, uh, you know, inserting the content itself as well as uh, the close button and, of course, the Tailwind classes themselves. So for the banner return, I want to quickly implement the visibility toggle. So let's go inside here. We're going to accept, uh, of course, the children prop as well as visible, we may as well accept everything else. So let's actually say variant and also the on close, okay? So for the visible uh, uh, prop, we're gonna say if not visible, then simply return null. So of course, this just means that if the parent decides that this should not be visible right now, it's gonna return null, effectively not rendering out the component. Okay, fantastic. So down here, we can now return a div to represent the banner itself. We'll say div, okay? Then class name, we're gonna be using a flex box here because of course we have three different columns to uh, render out. We're gonna say items center to ensure that the items are always centered vertically, that being the icon, the text, and the close button. I'm gonna give this a background gray of 50, a gap of two, uh, some padding of three, a border of two, and it's also going to be rounded. Then last, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say here, uh, border, oops, there we go, uh, border. Let's just do border blue 600 just for now. Okay, so that's the border color. So we have all of these styles specified on the div itself. We can now go inside here and use a paragraph to represent the actual banner content. So we'll say here, uh, P class name, then just say uh, flex one and then text small. So we want the paragraph to take up the remaining space of the whole banner as much as possible, right? And of course, just a smaller text size here. We can now pass through the children prop to of course render out whatever we pass into it, okay? Then lastly, right down here, before we test this one out, I just wanna render out the button to say a type of button as well. And then within here, we're gonna be using the IO close icon right here, just to of course render out that X close icon. Then real quick here, we're gonna say on click. So when the user clicks on the close button, we're going to simply call on close then use uh, question mark dot to effectively have this as a conditional uh, call of this function. So basically, if the on close prop is provided, we're going to call it, otherwise do not. So let's save this right here. Then we're going to go within our app file and let me just check this error there. So that's just an unused variable error. So going back inside the app file, let's just say, of course, banner. We're gonna say here is some sample text. Press save, we're back in the browser, and on a refresh, we get nothing. That's because I forgot to default visible to be uh, true. And I also forgot to default the variant to be info. I'll save this, go back in the browser, and we get the banner on the screen. So it's defaulting to a uh, blue border due to our, uh, our you, know, you know, of course our class right there. But for the most part, this is working perfectly fine. So we have the base going. The next step is gonna be to apply the dynamic border color based on the variant which gets passed in. Because if I was to go back inside here and if I was to say banner with a variance of success, I expect a green border. Save this back in the browser, it is still blue. So let's get that working right now by firstly defining a map between the variant and whatever class name we need to render out the different colors. We'll say const variant border color map, okay? We're going to say here for each one of these variants, so we're going to say info. We're going to say the info variant is going to give us a border blue of 600. So basically that current default, okay? I'm now going to uh, just copy and paste what I've got in my, uh, in my example code. So I'll just paste this right here, but simply just specify each variant success, warning and error. That's gonna be mapped to green, amber, and red respectively. And I'm also using the 600 shade for each one of these. Okay, so we have this map between the variant and the border color. Let's use that right down here. Let's change this class name to be template string. So backtick near the one on your keyboard. Then 
On the other side, for the border blue 600, let's instead make this dollar sign curly brackets and say uh, variant border color map and pass in that variant just like this, okay? I'll save this, go back in the browser and we get the success green border. Let's make a change here to say warning instead, okay? Just like this, back in the browser and is now the warning color. That's all working perfectly fine. We now need to uh, specify the icon to use as well as the icon color for each one of the variants. So this is gonna work in a very similar fashion to the border color. So down here, we're gonna say const variant icon map. So let's, let, uh, let's make a map between the variant and which icon to use from the iron icons library. We'll say here, info, is gonna map to the IO information circle icon, just like this. So we're simply getting a reference to the component itself. Now, I'm gonna go down a few more. We're gonna say success maps to the IO checkmark circle icon. The warning uh, variant is going to uh, map to the IO warning icon. And lastly, uh, the error variant is gonna to map to IO alert circle, just like this. So I'm going to import the IO warning icon, just like this, there we go. And we have the map between the icons, uh, sorry, the variants and the icon. Next up, we're gonna make a map between the variants and the icon color. So we'll say here, const variant icon color map equal to, do a very similar thing to just above here. I'll copy and paste this. We're gonna simply change uh, from border to just text. Also, Control D or Command D on your keyboard to say, uh, select the next uh, you know, selection of those characters there. So one, two, three, just like that. So we have text blue, 600, green, amber, and red. So we have the two maps specified. Let's now render out the icon on the banner. So we'll say down here, const icon equal to variant icon map. We're gonna take in there the variant once again. Then from down here, we're gonna say, simply just render out the icon, okay? And we're gonna just stop right there. I wanna see if it works right. I'll save this, okay? Back in the browser and we get the icon being rendered. So we're simply, getting a reference to the correct icon up here and then rendering it out right down here. And we can see it's also using the black color. So let's get that class name specified for, uh, of course, our different colors. So we'll say here, icon, then class name. Then just say simply once again, variant icon color map, then accept here the variant itself. I'll save this, go back in the browser and there we go. So we have the banner itself functioning correctly, okay? The issue is now, if I was to try and close the banner, it does not work. Again, this is because the banner itself is not managing the state of its open or closed status. Uh, we are, of course, uh, managing that from the parent component. So let's define some state to dictate whether or not the banner is visible. We'll say const, then banner visible, Okay, then set banner visible, alrighty. Equal to use state, we're gonna be using a default of true right here. Okay, so visible by default. And then right down here, we're gonna say banner variant warning, that's fine. We're gonna say, is it visible? Well, we're gonna say banner visible as the value there. And then we're gonna say on close, we're gonna simply call set banner visible and say not banner visible. So of course, just toggling between the current uh, value of banner visible. If it's true, it's gonna be false. If it's false, it's gonna be true, okay? I'll save this, go back in the browser. And now if I was to attempt to close the banner, we can see the state gets updated and of course the banner goes away. And I can simply change this state later on if I want to re-display the banner for whatever reason or even change the text uh, right down here. If this video helped you out, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next video.